All right, Jonathan, so I'm often on MMA sites, and I came across this video of this guy doing these crazy rolls throughout the cage to Mortal Kombat music. Now, I know that that was you, but I think that a lot of the MMA community doesn't quite know that. Yeah, Chance, about every six months, it seems like, that short little clip makes its rounds on social media. Um, it was my fight against Ken Shamrock. It was the last 10 seconds of the third round uh, in our fight. But it, it, you're right. It, it seems like it makes its rounds about every six months. A new group of people on social media start to share it and, and watch the clip. Um, usually, they, somebody leaves a comment. Or you don't know what the buttons do on the controller. so uh, And everybody thinks they're the first one to leave that comment. But I've seen that comment hundreds of times. But, yeah, that was in my fight with Ken Shamrock. And, um, uh, yeah, I've seen it several times on there. Yeah, and that got me thinking that we haven't talked about your fight with Ken Shamrock on the channel. So today, I'd like to do something a little different. What we're going to do is, is watch the fight and have you just talk about it. I haven't watched that fight in a long time. It's very frustrating to watch that fight, Chance. Um, out of all the fights I have, and I don't like, you know, there's no redos in MMA. Um, but out of all my fights, if there's one fight I could redo, it would be my fight against Ken Shamrock. Um, I felt like I just didn't fight. You know, I got out there and for a lot of different reasons, I, I didn't fight, but um, I'm totally willing to watch the fight. Let's do it, man. All right, I have not watched this fight in a long time. This is gonna be interesting. Look at me with like four tattoos. I look so blank. Ken Shamrock, the world's most dangerous man, right? All right, here we go. This fight is so frustrating for me to watch. I can re look. I remember just not letting my hands go. I, I just kept waiting and waiting. The, the first thing you tell young fighters is don't wait, get off first. And I just, this whole fight, I just waited and waited. The game plan for this was just in training camp, we had worked on, you know, really attacking his lead leg. I wanted to attack his lead leg on the inside and the outside, uh, punish his lead leg, and then uh, throw left hooks and, and right hands. When he stayed in the pocket too long after the left hook, followed up with a right hand. But um, I didn't let my hands go. Uh, I, I remember that from this fight. Um, I did, you know, throw a lot of, of kicks to his lead leg, and that was in the game plan. But um, I just didn't throw enough hands. And I remember thinking this whole fight camp, he was going to shoot on me. He was going to shoot and take me down. You know, obviously, Ken Shamrock's been around a long time. He can do it all. But primarily, he's thought of as, as a grappler and, and, a, and a leg locker. Um, by this point, uh, I think Tap Out Magazine had gave me the nickname, the Leg Lock Monster. So um, I just had it in my head for whatever reason that he was going to shoot on me for sure. And so I kept waiting for him to shoot. Um, he never did. He never did shoot. And I remember this nervous tick. Like, I've never done this before or since this fight with Shamrock. Um, is me reaching out, touching his gloves, pawing for his gloves, and grabbing my shorts. Um, that never happened before in my career or since in my career. It's uh, it's just a weird tick. I guess that's just what happens when you fight Ken Shamrock, man. It's just, um, it's just I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just waiting too long. And it's, it's frustrating to sit here and, and watch this. Uh, more waiting. More pawing. More grabbing my shorts. And when I see what I have success, when I fire the left hook, like we worked on, um, I had success. I just didn't do it nearly enough. And there we go. Let's pull up my shorts one more time. I don't know why I kept, kept doing that. I guess I was just nervous. Um, Right, and then you know I, I'm not trying to make him miss. I'm just covering up when he does uh, go offensive, and I don't. Out of all my fights, this is definitely the one that if I could redo it, I'd do it one more time because I feel like I didn't fight like myself, man. I I, I, I got out there, and I you know you hear the term choke, you know, or, or you, you hear somebody freezes, you know, they get, they get in a situation and they freeze. I think that's what happened. I think this is just me choking uh, during a fight and and not fighting. Um, this was a pretty slow paced, boring fight. And one thing people can say about me, you know, they can, you know, people say I suck or they say I'm, I'm good or, or, or whatever, but nobody ever says I'm boring. And this fight was boring. And, um, I just didn't do a whole lot and I don't have any excuses for it. I don't know why I'm out there not throwing punches. Um, 
But I, I did attack his lead leg. I mean, that was in the game plan. Yeah. Yeah, let's pull up my shorts one more time. There we go. Let's do it again. And again. Let's do it one more time. No? Yep. Yep. There we go. And we throw a jab and let's pull up my shorts again, probably. So frustrating to see this because I, I pride myself on being um, entertaining and, and making fights very entertaining against whoever. But uh, to get the opportunity to fight Shamrock and then to, to get in there and do this is, is just frustrating for me to watch. And you know, Ken never shot, and I kept thinking he's going to shoot. So I didn't want to overcommit to things. I can remember the thought process, um, but I mean, after you know, minutes going by and rounds going by of him not shooting on me, you think it would have clicked? Okay, he's not going to shoot. But uh, and up until the very last bell, I thought, okay, he's going to shoot any second now, because in my head, you know, this was Ken Shamrock, the guy that you know I had went to Blockbuster Video and rented all the VHS copies of UFC and and watched all of his fights. And I, I was just really expecting that Ken to come shoot on me, take me down, and try to get me in a submission. And it just didn't happen. Nothing big's really, really landing for either of us. Um, but, I mean, he was, he was more busy. He was more active with his hands right there anyway. So, you know, he... I would definitely give him that first round so I can see what the judges were, 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 were looking at. Okay, it's five minutes of that gone by. So second round here is just, uh, unfortunately, it's going to be more of the same. Me pawn. It's so frustrating to see that. Um, like I'd like to say I was using it as a gauge founder, to, you know, to see how far he is from me, but I wasn't. Uh, I don't know why I was doing that. We, I've never worked on doing that or judging distance or anything like that. Um, don't really know. I remember his corner would say some things and then I was, you know, kind of interacting with his corner a little bit. Uh, nothing negative. It was just me, you know, being silly and stuff. I'd like to run this back, man. I'm still waiting on him to shoot. Um, no idea why I thought I just kept repeatedly telling myself, okay, he's fixing to shoot, get ready. Uh, it never came. And now the second round, he's actually starting to let his hands go a little bit more. Um, Nothing ever really connected big. All these shots are just kind of, you know, just whatever. But um, they're scoring points, you know, definitely. I just didn't stay active. I tried to catch him with a left hook there. I thought maybe he'd stay in the pocket a little longer, but he was further away than I thought. That's something I do regularly. Like when, when you know, I kind of cover up, and then when people start to expose themselves and try to stay in the pocket and throw one or two punches too many without moving, uh, I try to fire something back. Um, but he was a little bit further away. Um, no movement here. It's hard to watch. I remember there was a fight out in the audience and, 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 and you know there gets a little pop from the crowd and I remember trying to catch peaks of this fight from the corner of my eye during the fight right I got the world's most dangerous man Ken Shamrock in front of me throwing punches and I'm trying to sneak peeks of this fight that's out in the audience it seemed like anything I could do to be self-destructive or, or to self-sabotage myself in this fight unconsciously uh, it seemed like I did it I mean um I was doing nervous ticks and not letting my hands go and thinking about a fight in the audience and anything except winning this fight. Um, and I didn't, I didn't win this one. <sighs> Tripling up on the jab.
See, right there, I wish I let that straight right go. Just pop. If I were to put my punches together like that um, for the duration of the fight, and this is a very slow-paced fight. There was no cardio issues or gas tank issues. I mean, um, I was fine the whole fight. Um, somewhere in here, I remember somewhere late in here in this third, uh, second round, excuse me, uh, I heard my corner, you know, say, Jonathan, you got to go. And, and usually you don't hear that from my corner. Usually my corner is, Jonathan, you got to calm down. Uh, because I'm just so geared to, to go forward and, and be offensive. And when I heard them say that, Jonathan, you got to go. I'm thinking, God, I haven't, uh, what, uh, I haven't done anything. So I immediately let a left hook go, and it ends up knocking him to the ground right here um, and, and tried to follow it up. And he, he, was, he was able to roll back and get back to his feet. And um, Thinking back, I should have went for this takedown right here and, and tried to work uh, a leg lock for the last 30 seconds of the round, but uh, I was content with just circling back. and Because I'm still thinking in my head, okay, Ken Shamrock wants to get me to the ground any kind of way, and then he's going to you know, do what he did on those VHS tapes from Blockbuster. you know. But uh, that wasn't the case, man. I was a big Ken Shamrock fan. I remember at UFC 8. I, I rented UFC 8. It was in uh, Puerto Rico, I believe. And he had a super fight against Chemo. Uh, and in the fight, he wore wrestling shoes with socks pulled up to his knees. And after I seen that, and he said, you know, he did that because he wanted friction on the legs. Um, I wore wrestling shoes with socks pulled up to my knees for, you know, the first maybe year and a half, two years of my career. Um, trying to be like Ken Shamrock and, and, and things. So I, I had a lot of respect for who Ken was and, and who he is. Um, here's the third round, still doing more pawing. I mean, nothing. there's three rounds of the exact same type of stuff going on. So frustrating. Uh, hashtag frustrating is the, uh, is the, is the key word for this fight. Um, I should be putting my hands together and and letting things go because I, I know probably even with that right here like he caught me with flush and so we start trading like I, I, see I, I let my hands go when he's firing back right but uh, if I could have just continued that it's so frustrating to see guys um, but yeah um, I don't know if that one got through uh, a bunch of these are just kind of, yeah. I remember nothing was really, oh, this third round, he pokes me. I get poked in the eye. I think it's somewhere in here. Um, he had his hands open. He threw it out, and he got me right in the eye. One of his things, right here, deep in my eye. I remember not being able to see anything out of it, right? And so uh, I'm talking to the ref. I'm trying to explain to the ref because I don't want the referee to stop it for any reason. But I also want to let him know, look, I can't see out of it, right? So that's kind of a fine line you got to walk there. It's like, sir, uh, don't stop this fight for any reason. I don't want the doctor to come in here, but uh, I can't really see out of it. Um, so you got to kind of walk that line a little bit. And so here I'm trying to, you know, clear it out and, and see out of it. And I remember hearing somebody in the crowd yell out that he scared Ken. And... Uh, People can say what they want to say about me, but they're not going to say I'm scared of anybody that's ever walked on this earth. I'll fight anybody. Um, so when I heard that, I kind of rushed to get back in the fight. Like, oh, ref, I'm, I, okay, I can do it. Let's do it. Um, because I didn't want anybody to think I was scared. I should have took my whole five minutes and let my eye clear out, but I couldn't. I'm telling the ref, let's do it. Um, and I can't see out of it. I cannot see out of my eyes right now. And he immediately catches me with something that I've never seen the punch coming. Um... He catches me with it, and I'm like, oh, okay, oh, well, well, the fight's still going here. I think it's, it's, it's immediate. It's like right in here somewhere. I can't see. Right here. Yeah, I couldn't see that. Um, I can't see any of that. I'm still trying to clear it out. Um, yeah. I think right in here, 
is where I'm able to start seeing things moving now. And <clears throat> so I'm good out of it. Um, but yeah, that was that kind of 45 seconds there um, where I couldn't see out of it and missiles were coming at me. And that was kind of a, a situation. But we're good now. I can see out of it. And right back to me pulling up my pants and pawing with my left hand, I guess. Ah. Just not staying busy enough. Even with that knockdown in the second round, you know, you'd probably give that second round to Ken. Um, He's being a lot more active right here, so you give this third round to Ken. So I kind of knew, um, and I'm just picking my spots there, but not following it up. Throwing one at a time is not gonna gonna win this fight. Um, ah, I want to do this one again. Um, but so I, I knew the judges was probably gonna have this 30-27, right? Um, I remember hearing the 10-second clapper. At the end of this, uh, at the end of this last third round, um, and I, I thought, what about just doing a hail mary? You know, uh, I won't, uh, if I turn my back, Ken is probably going to be aggressive and, and come forward. Um, so I thought, how, how, how can I turn my back to Ken? Well, I know I've been throwing these leg kicks. I'll miss a leg kick on purpose and and, and turn my back to Ken in the in the uh, in the follow through, and I thought he would come forward. Um, and then now this is in the last eight seconds of the fight, last nine seconds. And uh, so I roll, hoping that a leg is just going to materialize between my legs and I might be able to get an inside heel hook real fast. But um, he didn't follow. And so I did another row. I knew the fight was over. So it was just going to be left up to the judges. Um, but, but, you know, people talk about this row that's here coming up in the last eight or nine seconds of this fight. Um, it gets a lot of play. A lot of people, you know, make comments on this role. And out of everything I've done in my career, and it's been a lot, uh, this might be what I'm the most known for. Either this or uh, I did the People's Elbow in an MMA fight down in New Orleans. Um, that gets a lot of, you know, traction too. But so right in here, I know the judges are going to go against me. I hear the 10 second clapper go off and I figure, why not? Let's just miss this kick. Uh, let's try it again. Uh, roll! And the end of the fight. So uh, that's exactly how that played out, guys. Um, you don't get any redos in MMA, but if you did, I'd want one right here. Uh, Ken Shamrock, you know, got the decision. Thanks for watching, guys. and. Uh, I appreciate you guys checking out the channel.